unser nächster Gast auf dem roten Sofa hier bei Mephisto 97.6 ist durchaus weit angereist für die Buchmesse. Fatima Fahrin Mirza kommt aus den USA und hat letzten Sommer ihren Debütroman A Place for Us veröffentlicht. Im Februar ist dann die übersetzte deutsche Version in den Buchläden erschienen mit dem Titel Worauf wir hoffen. Im Buch geht es um eine muslimische Familie und ihr Leben in den USA. Meine Kollegin Sophie Rauch sitzt schon neben mir und ist bereit, mit ihr über ein Leben zwischen zwei Kulturen zu sprechen und ob sie sich vielleicht auch manchmal ein wenig fremd in ihrer eigenen Heimat fühlt. Please welcome Fatima Fahil Misa. Die Leipziger Buchmesse 2019 bei Mephisto 97.6. Interviews auf dem roten Sofa. Hey Fatima. <lacht> Hello. I'm glad you're here. It's your first time in Leipzig? Yes, first time in Germany in general, actually. Ah, yeah. Do you have even time to explore the city? Not or yet. <laughs> all the days here in the fear. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're not here to talk about Leipzig. We talk about your book and you. And um, you start to d develop up the, um, the, the writing, the book, when you were 18. Why took it so long? <laughs> Uh, so I started it and I was taking a creative writing class at the time. Um, I was a student at university at, the, at UC Riverside and I began the book then and um, I, I was returning to it every week in class and the more I returned to it the more I felt like I, I, I had a duty to these characters uh, to tell this story and um, it partially took so long because one I When I began it, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know how to write. I, I didn't know how to be a writer. I didn't know, um, and so partially I was, I was learning how to write. I was um, reading books and poems and watching movies and listening to songs, all with the question, trying to figure out, you know, like how did the author do this? And what do I admire in this creator's work? And what do I want to do with my own? And I was also exploring the story. And so that's, I think, why it took so long. <laughs> And uh, how long did you uh, think and think um, before you say, okay, I uh, share it with someone? I share, did, hmm? Until I shared it with someone? Um, I was lucky that I started sharing it early on. I don't think I could have um, kept it all to myself without some kind of community and guidance. You know, when I first began it, I was sharing it with my younger brother. So he was 15 when I started sharing the pages with him. And um, in a way, it took me, you know, seven, almost eight years to work on it. And it's it's funny because my brother Ali, he's really grown with this story too. Um, and I have as well. And so um, just the amount of years that I asked him basic questions about the draft, he really started to know the family you know, way better than I did at some points. Like sometimes I would call him and say, you know, Ali, I think I'm going to cut this line or cut this section. And Ali would say, Fatma, you called me a month ago saying you wanted to cut that section. So it's a sign that you have to cut it, you know. So um, my brother was my first reader in my community. And then I started going to school for the, to, to write the novel as well. I started attending the Iowa Writers Workshop. And there I, my cohort became my readers too. So not only the characters in the book developed, uh, also you and your brother. <laughs> Definitely. I feel like I, I learned so much while I was writing this book. I learned so much about, you know, like what it means to be a family, how, how to be a person in the world, um, how to advocate for myself. Because I felt like for the years that I was working on this novel, my main goal Uh, was to was to write it was to to give do everything I could to to write the best book uh, that I was capable of and so that meant um, yeah prioritizing that desire meant advocating for myself whether it was to my family or to you know whatever um, so in that way it was it was really useful to me and then also the content that I was writing about. Um, you know, these characters are existing at this crossroads where um, on one hand they want to be loyal to themselves and on one hand they want to honor the home that they've come from, their family, their faith, their culture. And uh, those were, even though I am not these characters, those were questions that I was thinking of in my own life and answering it through them helped me kind of find uh, a, a way of thinking about it in my own life. 
You take us into the life of an Indian American Muslim family. Uh, the readers accompany the family through the different chapters in their life and get us an insight into a life between a two different cultures. Which topics do you, did you really want to explore with your book? That's, that's a really interesting question because it kind of... Um, I, it's interesting because I don't think as a writer I ever sat down and thought, you know, what topics do I want to tackle? I actually had no idea that I was writing about these things. I remember um, only after I was I done was I done writing it and I was reading it did I realize oh this is about a you know a family that exists at a crossroads this is about a, you know a clash in value systems that compose um, this family and it's about you know home and identity and belonging but when I was all the years that I was writing it that was the furthest from my mind and I'm actually really glad about that because I don't think I could have written it if I was thinking of these big topics you know When I was writing it, I was the questions were so simple. It was, you know, what does Hadia want? Uh, why, why is it hard for her to reach for it? Why, why does Amar feel isolated by the home that he's been born into? What are the conditions that make that worse? And what, what are the draws and pulls of his home and environment that makes him want to keep coming back? What makes him want to return to the, the place that he's from? Um, and also, in a very specific way, like, why does he run away? Uh, who does he love? Yeah. Who does she love? You know, so it was like answering very simple questions and um, stumbling upon greater answers, I guess. Yeah, and while, while reading, I, I thought by myself, so, uh, Fatima wants to erase the stereotype of Muslims and the... Um, to create a new per perspective of this culture, of this community. Mm -hmm. um, do you think you've managed the change? Uh, do you, what, what did you mean by something about the stereotype? What, um, what did to, you to erase, 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 erase yeah. 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 Um, so, again, you know, when I was sitting down to write these characters, I never thought, you know, I am writing about Amar, a young Muslim man, you know, living in America post 9-11. Or I never thought about Hadia, you know, young Muslim woman. I never thought of them this way, you know. When I when I think of my own identity, um, at times, yes, I do think of myself in that way, but other times I'm just, you know, I'm just Fatima first, right? And so I was trying to approach the character. I wanted to really protect these characters from having to only tell a story where they're interrogating or exploring that, that element of their identity. Um, I instead wanted to really capture what it's like to be them. And so sometimes, um, of course, those um, what what that requires of them or what it's like for them to be in the in in these bodies um, is at the forefront of what's going on you know like there's a scene where Amar is being bullied after 9-11 then it becomes very clear that this is who he is in this particular moment in history and there are other moments when I wanted to just give them the space to explore what they truly are concerned with which is things like you know the test that, that is coming up or falling in love for the first time or you know um, having a tender moment between your siblings the the stuff that make up the you know the the my life and my loved ones lives and and um but but so often with um portrayals of of muslim characters that's never seen um so often the stereotypes are really reductive and that's very harming and um distances people from being able to see these lives as human and i and i wanted so badly to to approach them as people first Uh, you would call it a sense of duty uh, to show the people, to, to make the community more relatable to people? No, I, I actually never thought, you know, I have a duty to make this community more relatable. Um, that thought never crossed my mind. My, my duty, but I did have a huge sense of duty. And my sense of duty while I was working on it was to do justice to these characters' lives. To, to honor their story, to make myself the kind of writer that's worthy of telling their story uh, on the prose level, and to kind of capture what it truly is like to be them. You know, like, how do the parents actually think of their faith? How do they think of their lives on an eternal plane? How do the kids contend with that in their own lives, you know, if they're struggling with their faith? And so my, my duty was not to uh, the audience. 
or uh, the readers that I didn't imagine at that time, um, and to make this story uh, uh, relatable or understandable to them, my duty was to these characters to tell their story as honestly as I could, uh, with as much empathy in my heart for them, for each of their characters, mm -hmm. even when they're in conflict with each other. Yeah. And if it happens to become a relatable novel, if, it, if people connect with it, it is because these characters are human. Mm -hmm. And uh, you use uh, also na different narrative perspective in your novel uh, to tell the story of the family. Why did you choose this narrative form? I wanted to, um, well, on one hand, it wasn't a, a choice that I really made. I just found myself really exploring um, the novel through different perspectives, uh, Hadia's perspective, Amar's, and Layla's, and, um, and trying to figure out what the story was for each of them. You know, why did Amar run away, and how, did, how does he answer that question, and how do his family members answer that question? But I realized as I was doing it, um, it was also allowing me to really reflect on um, all the different ways that we look at these moments that make us who we are. And how maybe for us, um, the, we, we only see our own perspective and only when we are in the perspectives of our loved ones do we realize actually how limited we are in, in thinking things. And so it became kind of an interesting exercise in in how little we know our loved ones and also how desperately we try to understand our loved ones and um, also you know because the novels um, fueled by this uh, desire to figure out what went wrong in this family the answer that I arrived at because of the different perspectives is that there's no there's no one way to know and there's no right and wrong you know it's always everyone is just doing their best and sometimes even when you're doing your best it's not enough yeah. and do you have a favorite character <laughs> I actually have I do um, well it, I love them all um, the novel was really born out of this love for Amar and trying to understand him at first But actually, when I was inhabiting, the last section is in the father's perspective, Rafiq's perspective. Um, there's something about that character that um, that I really feel for the most. And also, um, it was such an honor to, to embody his consciousness. Um, and also, his character is the one that's the furthest from mine, uh, the least relatable in a way, because he's... He's a man, he's, he's much older than I am, he's in his 60s when he's writing his section and um, he's immigrated from India to the United States, he's a father, um, so in some ways he's the furthest from me and yet he's a little bit the closest to my, to my heart. And how difficult was it to write this person? That one was the easiest. Um, really? Yeah, the, the, to write that section, you know, it it did feel like it just came out um, as it was. I mean, of course, I, I edited it a lot. Um, but the other sections, they felt much more like work and much more like imagining my way into this world. And partially because I began the father section after having um, written the bulk of what was going to happen. And so I knew, you know, in terms of the plot points, what, what, what the father is going to be returning to. So maybe that was the hard work that had been done. But I was also so surprisingly um, effortless to, to see that his take on these moments was, was different. And what was shocking to me actually was how, um, how I, you know, how all the characters are limited and how they understand him and think of him. But also I had been... Um, completely misunderstanding him. And now we would like to hear an excerpt from your novel. Do you like? Oh, sure. Um, I'll just read from the first page. Oops. <laughs> so I'll read from the very beginning. Thank you all for being here. Um, so the novel begins in Amar's perspective. He's the youngest son in this family, and he, um, he, he has just come home after running away. He's been gone for three years, and the reason he's back is because he's at his sister's wedding. Um, 
As Amar watched the hall fill with guests arriving for his sister's wedding, he promised himself he would stay. It was his duty tonight to greet them. A simple task, one he told himself he could do well. And he took pride in stepping forward to shake the hands of the men or hold his hand over his heart to pay the women respect. He hadn't expected his smile to mirror those who seemed happy to see him. Nor had he anticipated the startling comfort in the familiarity of their faces. It had really been three years. Had it not been for his sister's call, he might have allowed even more years to pass before summoning the courage to return. He touched his tie to make sure it was centered. He smoothed down his hair. As if a stray strand would be enough to call attention, give him away. An old family friend called out his name and hugged him. What would he tell them if they asked where he had been and how he was doing? The sounds of the Shanai started up to signal the commencement of Hadia's wedding, and suddenly the hall was brought to life. There, beneath the golden glow of the chandeliers and surrounded by the bright colors of the women's dresses, Amar thought maybe he had been right to come. He could convince them all. The familiar faces, his mother, who he sensed checking on him as she moved about, his father, who maintained his distance. He could even convince himself that he belonged here, that he could wear the suit and play the part, be who he had been before, and assume his role tonight as the brother of the bride. Thank you. Thank you. You also came from a British Indian family <laughs> and grew up in San Francisco. How many of your own experience do, did you incorporate into the novel? Um, so the way that I think about it is that the, the landscape that these characters live in, you know, the emotional landscape, the spiritual landscape, uh, the situations, the context, that's so personal to me. That's the life I grew up in, you know. Uh, my parents also immigrated from India, my mom from England actually, um, and they were very much growing up, you know, trying to pass on their culture and tradition and also, you know, impart the Islamic values and traditions um, onto my brothers and I. And also, you know, my grandparents lived with us and so our, in our home we would speak Urdu, outside we'd speak English. And um, so I grew up in that context and it was, um, you know, there's like there's both immense beauty and comfort in it and there's also a kind of specific difficulty in that you know your parents there, there, there seems to be a greater gulf between you and your parents you know the gulf between parents and child is always there but in this case it, it you know growing up it was a little bit frustrating because I would think you know um, maybe as every child does that you know your parents just don't understand you or that you know in some ways they want you to live your life according to these values that you may not want to um, you know hold yourself to and so um, that conflict was really felt in different situations but what was amazing for me was to be able to explore those questions you know um, that crossroads What is it like when you when you speak one language at home and then you go outside and your language is different? What is it like when you grow up keeping um, being true to yourself with your siblings, uh, but hiding your life from your parents in a way? What is that specific relationship and how your siblings in that moment kind of become like your parents or your mini family within your family? Um, all these things that I loved and um, hated about you know growing up, I wanted to understand better through these characters, and so. The characters react to these situations in ways that are their own. And because they have different personalities than me and my loved ones, um, every time they, every time something happens in the novel, um, you know, they then they can only react to those things as themselves, right? So even yeah. if they might begin with something that did happen in real life, by the time the scene is done, it's so far from any truth that I recall, you know? Um, But the amazing thing is, regardless, it's the, the questions that were really important to me. Like, how do you be true to yourself? How do you honor who you are when it's at, sometimes at odds with where you've come from? Yeah. You know. And did you finally find characteristics of themselves in the characteristics of the characters? <laughs> no, because the characters really are their own, you know. But they, my family um, understood the world. 
and, and my cousins understood the world. And my brother said, you know, my brothers, when they were done reading it, they, they, my, he said to me, um, you know, Fatma, this was my first time ever seeing my life reflected in fiction, even though what happens is so different. And I've, I've been so fortunate to hear from so many um, characters who share a similarity in, 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 with these characters. It may be that their parents are immigrants or maybe that they were, they're also Muslim um, or they're also Indian or who knows what, right? But that, that to see the details of your life reflected, um, that is something that is universal, even though the plot is so specific to this book. Yeah. And the part uh, where you described the days after 9-11 are very impressive and um, discrimination against people with mi migration background and discrimination based on faith is increasing and ra ra racism is, wide is widespread ideology. Yeah. And um, how do you feel about it? Uh, um, did you sometimes feel strange in your own homeland? Absolutely. Um, how do I feel about it? Um, I feel that it's a global, it's a global issue. You know, um, intolerance, um, xenophobia, racism, um, ignorance, especially um, surrounding these lives. You know, there's like such a global rise in anti-Muslim sentiment. I mean, just this last week was the shooting in the mosque in New Zealand. Um, these things are not accidental. In that. Um, You know, ev what I mean by that is that, like, there are so many forces that are complicit in this happening. Um, and one of those is that there's such a lack of representation of what these lives are actually like. And so then there's such a, um, and, and there's such like a, um, The, the, the media that's surrounding you know, different events and things is so imbalanced in a way that when there's a lack of representation and there's only you know, um, an, an abundance of negative representation or stereotypes in, in Hollywood or literature that are so um, stereotypical and reductive, of course, you know, if you don't actually interact with these characters, th not these characters, but these lives in your own life, then you, you also... Um, fall into this belief that you're so different than than them, um, which is one of the most frustrating beliefs to me. You know, growing up in the West, yes, it came with its own ar array of particular conflicts that I had to navigate. But at no point did I feel that my lifestyle was um, incompatible with um, you know the traditions that my parents wanted or the 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 faith the the requirements of of the faith or anything like. It was always a. It, it may be it may be difficult difficult to reconcile, but it's not impossible. And so, I feel that um, so often these these kind of um, this ignorance or this um, lack of understanding um, can be solved by spending time with one another and 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 spending time with um, the stories like this um, that that really show you that above anything that that. You know, people are just people, right? Yeah, and so how do you define home for yourself? That's such a broad question. How do I define home for myself? Um, you know, it's funny. Home is where I've come from. And, I've, and, I, and I define myself from that home. And I also define myself against that home, uh. if that makes sense. And... Um, When I was maybe a teenager, that felt so painful to think like, I'm from here, but I, you know, I, there are certain values or traditions that I don't want to do. Um, but as I've gotten older, I just, I just feel um, that actually it's not, it's not so much of a painful thing that there's a, that my identity is actually expansive, and it contains where I've come from, and it also contains the life that I'm carving out for myself. And and uh, a blessing is that you can, you know. Um, that you can return home and, and be as you are and also like, you know, be where you are and bring parts of it. So that's, I guess that's what I would say. And I think these last words are perfect to finish our interview. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.